webmasters, industry people, Jay Todd here on this new kind of Zoom kind of thing. Oh, modern technology. Look what we got going. I'm here in my home hosting a Zoom conference with uh, a very special guy, good friend of mine, and the guy who actually approves all the APCW videos, and that would be Gary Trask from Casino City. How are you doing today, Gary? I'm doing great, Jay Todd. How are you? Well, you know, I'm up and I got pants on, sort of. So I guess, I mean, you only see me from, from here up, so no That's problems. Good. And I, I really, I wear pants more as a way to, to protect the public than any kind of shame I have personally. So I would, I would encourage you to wear pants, yes. There you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm protecting you. Thank you. The whole purpose. Uh, but these are going to be interesting. I think these are going to be fun. Very casual type of thing where we come in and kind of uh, discuss what's going on each and every week. That's the whole idea behind these things. So you, I'm guessing, will be on more frequently than, say, some other people. Uh, I know that uh, Anthony is very busy and uh, he wanted to be here, but, you know, duty calls. I'm sure he will be on with me at some point, or maybe we'll, we'll have all three of us and do a three-way. Uh, and hey, that would not be the first time, I guarantee you, that it would not be the first time Zoom has hosted a three-way. We know that, right? Yeah. No, no comment. Okay. No. Yeah. I, I saw the video, Gary. All right. Um, I, you know, I should have introduced you as, you know, my friend from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to keep the Boston accent to a minimum. That's okay. I, I, you people watching stop. overseas probably don't get that illusion. There's a commercial over here with the guy from Boston. It's, they're, they're hilarious, and that's the way they introduce they're pretty, spot, they're pretty much spot on, too. Yeah. yeah. Mass, mass, mass holes, as we, as we are often called. Mass holes. That's funny. Uh, but, but before we go any further, I did want to... Uh, I did want to say that we're doing this only because people like Intertops are kind enough to sponsor the APCW. They've been a member for a long, long time. So right up front in our very first Zoom call back and forth, I just want to say thank you to our friends at Intertops. They're, you know, been in business like 25 years or something. I mean, if you can't trust these guys, then you shouldn't even be in this business. So you want to check them out, Intertops, or it's affiliate.intertops.eu. I, I think I got that right. Okay. Well, so Gary, the floor is yours. Go ahead. I'm here to answer questions, uh, Jay Todd. We, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, for the first time in person out in Las Vegas in just a couple of weeks. That's true. That's true. We're going to be uh, attending the Global Gaming Expo. And we're, we're going to talk about that in some depth uh, here in uh, just a few moments, but but first, I uh, I wanted to say that when we do these in the future, uh, we will be inviting not just people like Anthony, perhaps Michael Korfman to join us, uh, but we'll also be taking questions from the forum, from from affiliates, uh, especially affiliates. May I ask? I mean, this really is designed to be a program that will uh, go more in depth about things that concern them. And so I don't know exactly, haven't done the logistics yet about how we're going to get questions, if there will be a, a phone line where they can leave them vocally and we can play them, or if we'll just take email or forum questions, or perhaps at some point, if they can behave themselves, we, we could have one of them come on and uh, kind of like maybe uh, have their questions live and really uh, put our chestnuts roast, roasting on that open fire. Yeah, I mean the GPW membership is not shy about their opinions on the forum. If you're if ever been to the forums, um, um, you know it's it's great. It's it's uh, you know people have opinions, and a lot of these affiliates have decades of experience, um, and so their opinions are valid. Uh, sometimes they you know like everything else, uh, things go off the tracks a little bit, but for the most part, it's it's very informative and. And um, one thing about the GPWA Times Magazine that I really enjoy is the affiliate interviews we do because you kind of get to know them as people rather than an, an avatar. Um, so, so there's some there's some really interesting stories out there. I mean, I read these interviews sometime, and uh, or do these interviews for the magazine, and I'm blown away by the by the 
the stories these people have and where they've come from and the things they've done. So um, yeah, I think that'd be great to involve our membership because they're, they're experienced, they're educated, they're um, and opinionated. So that, that, that combination would be good for the show, I think. That's true. No, I, I, I think that would bring a lot of value to the show. And maybe we could do that with some of the, uh, the uh, GPWA staff as well. I mean, for instance, a lot of people don't know that at night you're a Marilyn Monroe impersonator. You have the full wig and bodysuit, and uh, I've seen it. It is shockingly realistic. Mm -hmm. No comment. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk about the upcoming IGB events. This this video will be out, you know, a couple of weeks before that happens. And uh, for us in the United States, I mean, it's possible we could have gone and attended. Obviously, we're not going to go at this point. You know, it's just, it's too late, to, even if we wanted to, but the, the hassle, I mean, when you travel internationally, first of all, it's a hassle. You go through a lot, it's a whole day process. It's just excruciating. And then if you add some of the things that may be going on in addition with this pandemic, it becomes, it could become a week long, two week long laborious process. I mean, there's a lot of risk involved here. This sure is, um, you know, and I think they're doing everything they can to to um, make it as easy as or as seamless as possible. But this day and age that we live in, it's difficult to travel anywhere. Never mind uh, going out of the country. Uh, but they did um, uh, work out a deal where quarantine wasn't going to um, be necessary, and they reported this week, Clarion Gaming, that. Um, the registrations have spiked 40% since they made that uh, declaration about the non-quarantine. So that's good news. Um, so hopefully that'll help attendance. But I mean, it's just like anything else during this pandemic, if you're going out to dinner or you're you know, going anywhere out in public, you have to have patience and you have to realize what you're getting into. And you, if you're going to get frustrated or angry or flip off the handle because of having to wear a mask or having to do this, things that, that none of us want to do, then you might as well just stay home. So, you know, you know, you, you know what you're getting into if, you, if you're traveling, especially, like I said, out of the country. Um, so you just have to kind of go with it and adhere by the rules and, and try to make the most of it. And if you can't, then my suggestion is don't go. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, I mean, I'm not one to flip out unless there's a camera in front of me, yeah. but uh, you know, um, I just recently traveled to Las Vegas and I had no problem keeping my mask on. Of course, it was only a two and a half, three hour flight, not the, the 10 hours that I face going to the UK. I think it's only about five or six for, for you folks over there on the East Coast. But, uh, you know, in addition, I, and don't get me wrong, IGB, Clarion have done an amazing job of getting this quarantine lifted. That is like trying to get an audience with the Pope. I mean, to communicate with the government and to facilitate that is, is I'm blown away. However, there are things that are still beyond anyone's control. And that is if you test positive while you're over there or when you first get there and you have to carry the kits with you and you have to get the results. And I don't know how all that process is involved. And frankly, I would be a little hesitant to put it into action right now. And I say that because that is the only reason I'm not going to the IGB events. I would love to go. I haven't seen my friends and I haven't uh, networked and so on. But I mean, uh, for me, it's more of a, not a fear of the virus, but a fear of what could happen if I'm traveling. I mean, we've all had luggage lost or missed a flight or had it delayed because of weather because those things are beyond our control. And if you're sitting next to somebody on the plane that, <clears throat> and then you get over there and they, sorry, sir, you're positive. Now that letter of invitation doesn't do you any good. I mean, you're going to be in a, a, a hotel or someplace, wait, just waiting it out to come home. And then you have to test negative before they even let you back in the country. Yeah. You know, it's a gambling conference. So it's, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. You have to weigh the odds. And uh, if you have positive EV on your trip and you think, you know, uh, that there's a, 80% chance that you're going to be fine, but there, you know, there's a 20% chance. And I don't know if those are the right percentages, but you know what I'm saying? You have to weigh those decisions, weigh those factors into your decision. And if you do get caught up in a situation, which you just explained, that's part of the deal. And you can't, you can't, 
there's no one, no one else to blame but yourself because because you put yourself in that position. Um, so you just have to go with it with that that in mind. And um, I'm sure obviously that's going to hurt attendance at all these events. And unfortunately, I don't think these these restrictions and these mandates are going anywhere any uh, anywhere anytime soon. I think it's a way way of the world for at least another year or so. You know, it's funny you should mention that. There's a lot of uh, a lot of optimism. And I was optimistic several months ago about the yep. uh, the ice event coming up yep. and scheduled for early February. And to be honest with you, I would love that event to happen. I just I just don't feel it's going to. Uh, and if it does, I don't believe it's something that North America will be able to participate in for the most part. I've, I've spoken to a lot of my colleagues in the land based gaming arenas that work for a lot of slot manufacturers. Uh, I was talking to them in regards to my visiting their booths coming up at the G2E, and the consensus from most of them was the same, that they're not optimistic about travel to the UK in February. It's just too soon. But, you know, uh, I think as far as the upcoming event, I think it's mostly European and UK traffic that is more local. You know, if, if you get... Uh, if you get caught in quarantine in the UK and you're coming over from, uh, or, or if you get caught in Amsterdam and, and you're coming over from Germany, it's, it's probably not that big a deal. There, there's probably even a criteria in place to help you out. But, you know, if you're from Seattle or Boston and you get caught over there, like, I mean, there's, there's nowhere to go. You're, you're stuck. You're right there. So hopefully things turn around quickly, quickly, quickly. But you know what? Those guys are going to face the same problem coming to this side of the pond. Right. And, you know, I think that the organizers of ICE are probably keeping a close eye. We'll, we'll be keeping a close eye on the events as we tape this right now. SBC uh, Summit Barcelona is going on. Um, Barcelona is quarantine free. Um, so, you know, they had to wear they're wearing masks inside you know, the event. Um, but there's no other, no, you know, no other, you know, there's no quarantine involved as far as when, when people got there. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a big spike and we hear a lot of, um, you know, uh, COVID infections that happen there. Same thing with IGB. I'm sure after that, we'll see how that goes. Um, so as, as, as we have these events, hopefully they keep happening. Um, you know, maybe if they all go off without a hitch, ice will be in better shape. Uh, but still to your point, uh, traveling from North America, uh, especially in the winter months, we saw what happened with with the um, the COVID numbers last winter. Hopefully, we won't it won't be like that. But you have to expect that they're going to go up again. So, um, I, yeah, ice is probably a, a dicey dicey proposition right now. But I hope it happens. And even if it happens without us from the North America coming, I, you know, I hope it happens for our friends over there because that's a great show, obviously. Yeah, no, it's one of the biggest shows in the industry. It's one of my personal favorites. And if they had it and we could go and I, I we had to wear masks, you know what? I think a lot of people would agree. I look better when my face is covered. Totally. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to take a break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the upcoming Global Gaming Expo. At Bet365, we're always innovating, creating. It's this constant pursuit of perfection that brought you Bet Builder, live stream, in play betting, and match live. It's the reason we're the world's favourite online betting company. Please gamble responsibly. All right, affiliates, we're back. That's me and Gary Trask from Casino City. And uh, Gary, we have an event coming up in Las Vegas at uh, the beginning of October. Am I correct? You are correct. Looking forward to, I, I personally have not been out to Vegas since before the pandemic. I'm looking forward to getting back out there. Um, not thrilled about having to wear a mask, but as I said, you know, previously, that's the rules. There, you know, no one likes it, so I'm going to adhere by it and go out there and make the most of the trip. I'm going to probably get a mask that looks like either that alien thing that's on my face mm -hmm. or or Bane. Have you seen those that have the Bane mask? That yeah. Be, either way, I'm covering up my face, and it's a win-win for everyone involved. Agreed. Agreed. 
Uh, but you know the, the the mandate to be vaccinated uh, that that uh, was uh, declared by G2E uh, that that caused a lot of um, talk in the industry and on the forums, um, and of course so over here in the U.S. and actually I guess anywhere, it's just such a hot button topic, um, and it becomes a political thing here in the U.S. But we did a poll on the GPWA forums on whether or not a vaccine mandate at an industry conference would make you more likely to attend an event, less likely, or it wouldn't matter. And it's a small sample size, but the results we got were e exactly down the middle. Uh, um, you know, half the people said that they, it would make them more likely to go to the show. Other people's uh, other half said less likely to go to the show. There were a couple that said um, it wouldn't matter either way. So that's, that's the divide. And it's, it's, um, Depends on who you talk to. Some people don't want to get the vaccine and some people get it and think other people are crazy for not getting it. And it's a personal preference. Um, I don't, I don't want to get into a whole political thing. I you know I'm vaccinated, um, but I don't look down on or, or, or chastise anybody who, you know, didn't get the vaccine. I understand that. And I know it's a personal preference, but um, if you're not vaccinated, you're not going to G2E. So it's a choice you make. No, you're exactly right. And you hit upon what I what I want to stress very strongly is that I don't personally give a damn if someone's vaccinated or not. I mean, it's people will fight about anything as if you've been in the GPWA forums for any length of time, you know, <laughs> but uh, this is not a hill I want to die on. I mean, I, I really don't care that much. I myself am vaccinated as well. Just because, you know, I mean, well, I've got all kinds of reasons. I travel and I do things and and people can think I'm crazy for taking the vaccine or not. That's fine. That discussion would be a whole other two hour topic. We probably have death threats and all kinds of other things flying around from people. So if you got a vaccination, great. If you don't want to for your own personal reasons, that's your choice. Don't care. But G2E will require you have that vaccination. Now, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to verify that yet. I don't think they are really, if you bring a card or it's an app on your phone, have you heard anything else about how they're gonna be verifying that? I haven't, I'm assuming it's gonna show you a card. Um, I know the World Series of Poker, um, they're requiring all participants um, to be vaccinated um, and they use an app on your phone that I think it's called the Clear app. Um, and uh, for people who aren't aware, the World Series of Poker is taking place this fall instead of the summer. Uh, it starts on the 29th of September, and it runs through the end, uh, almost the end of November, uh, with the main event starting in early November. And that's going to be really interesting to see what the attendance is like. I know there's a lot of pent up demand um, to play live poker, but there's, you know, we talked about the travel restrictions and so forth. I know from what I've read and heard, a lot of the professional poker players, what they're doing is they're, they're coming over from, from overseas and going to say Canada or Mexico or Costa Rica and staying there for two weeks. And then that way they can come into the U S without having to quarantine. Um, you know, recreational players probably aren't, gonna, aren't able to do that, but professional players that can go anywhere in the world for two weeks and just play poker online. And um, so I, I'm sure the professional players, a lot of them, that that's what they're doing, but I think it's obviously going to hurt recreational players um, from attending the WSOP. So uh, that's another, another uh, huge industry event to keep an eye on. And, you know, the fear of everyone is to see, you know, numbers spike in September, you know, after when it starts in late September and early October, and then all of a sudden, you know, we get to the main event and there's problems. Let, let's hope we don't have to go down that path, but hopefully that'll go all go off um, without a hitch and uh, be interesting. But again, um, <laughs> COVID, you know, it's not going anywhere. And a city like Las Vegas is like a petri dish because because you, you just have people coming from all over the world usually getting together in close spaces and um, so it's going to be an interesting few months for the industry with the WSOP and G2E and uh, let's see where we stand uh, say end of November hopefully um, there are no major um, uh, outbreaks but we'll see. No, I. I... I agree. And, and the thing that I always thought about when I was doing a lot of the shows and reading these stories about these, uh, what are they called, super spreader type of events, uh, we just had a, a fair, a county fair 
uh, a few weeks ago at the end of summer. And, you know, there was an outbreak from that. And these people were outdoors all day and uh, they traced it back to the fair. And with Las Vegas, you got people coming in and going out, coming in and going out. And most people don't only stay in Las Vegas five days a week or so. So they could come in, you know, from a, an American city, not having to get tested, be positive, spread it, get on a plane and leave, or have another person come in, catch it, get on a plane and leave and not even show symptoms until they're home or whatever. So it's, uh, it is a real concern. And, and to that point, I thought we kind of wrapped this up with kind of flipping the table. You talk about the professional and amateur players at the WSOP. Well, fortunately, I think most of the recreational players that would show up for that event will be American. Uh, I, I'm sure some people come from overseas to play in some of the smaller events, but I don't think you're really a recreational player if you're dropping 10 grand to go into the main event. If you are, you got an expensive hobby and you're doing better financially than I am, I'll tell you that. But uh, to come in for the Global Gaming Expo from the UK or from the EU, I'm sure they're going to face many of the same challenges that, that we would face going over there for ICE. And perhaps for them, it's the same thing that I was saying. It's just, even if you could pull it off, what's your, what's your it's expected value, as you said, what's your ROI going to be from attending the ICE event, or sorry, the uh, G2E? And, and I'm not taking anything away from any event. I go to all the events and I, I always come out with great video footage and interviews and game reviews and positive experiences from my networking while I'm there. But, you know, G2E is a North American land-based and somewhat online event. ICE kind of combines it. It's more of a European super show, kind of similar to G2E. The IGB events are more online, affiliate focused, marketing focused. So each event has its own unique things. So, when you say you have to look at and calculate your ROI, it all depends on what segment you're in, where you're coming from, what your company does, what it's going to deliver, how many clients, et cetera. So that's what we mean when we talk about ROI. But I mean, just the event itself is going to be kind of difficult to navigate. I understand that they're going to have markers on the floors telling you you can only go in one certain direction. Yeah. And who knows if that's helpful. Um, um... You know, I, I, I Jay Todd, I, I really honestly believe that the people that for years and years have loved going to these shows, um, both from a, from a professional networking um, business standpoint and from having a good time standpoint, um, those people are going to go to the shows. Um, they're going to continue to go to the shows. They think it's worth their while and they have a lot of fun and they've missed their, like you mentioned, the friends that they see every year at these shows. So those are the people that are going to go and, and take the risk. Um, the people that, we're always lukewarm about going to shows and kind of did it because business forced them to, they're probably not going to the shows. I, th I think that's, that's where the, where the line is drawn. Um, I know I'm personally looking forward to getting out there and going to a show. Um, but you know, I, I understand people that who are, who are not, but the people that really enjoy the shows are going to be there, I think, uh, because they love it so much and, and they get a lot out of it. And, and I, I firmly believe that the face-to-face -face personal meetings um, will never go away and will always be very important in business. People do business with people they like, and it's, it's difficult to get to know somebody over a Zoom call, let's, let's face it. But if you meet somebody and then go to a bar and have a couple of drinks, or you go to dinner, or you go to lunch, or you go to coffee, you have a coffee, that face-to-face -face interaction will never be replaced. So um, again, I, like I said, I think people that enjoy the shows and think they get a lot out of them, both from a business standpoint and uh, from a having a good time standpoint, they're going to be at the shows. I agree. Well said. And I will see you there. We're going to be doing our traditional, you know, APCW from the floor of the G2E show, right? Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Gary. I think we've covered a lot in this first call. Uh, and, uh, you know, I look forward to doing it again, perhaps on a monthly basis is what, what my goal is. And uh, again, if you're an affiliate watching, uh, stay tuned to the forums. That's probably the best way to communicate with you about how we're going to be taking your questions and, uh, you know, and inviting all of them in. And, and this will be dynamic. Every month it'll change, but every month 
it will be in depth and talking about what matters to you guys the most. So thank you very much, Gary. I'll let you get back to work. Thanks, Jay Todd. Have a great day. Yeah, you have a real job. I just mess around with videos.